Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar today on the topic of streaming analytics for the Internet of Things on Apache Spark. My name is Larry Pearson. I'm the Vice President of Marketing at Impetus Technologies, and I'm delighted to be your host and your MC uh, for today's session. We've got a nice uh, audience already joining. I see there are many others still coming on. Uh, from a number of different time zones. So regardless of where you are today, I wish you a good day and look forward to having you as part of our event. Our webinar today will, be, uh, will feature a team of experts from uh, within our Stream Analytics uh, business unit, and they'll be sharing information on the IoT domain in general and uh, sharing an IO IoT application blueprint. We'll also be covering a number of use cases uh, in a couple of different areas, connected car and also an industrial automation, very interesting industrial automation use case. And uh, all of these were built on Apache Spark using Stream Analytics, which is a widely used uh, stream processing engine. I'm sure uh, most of you are aware of that for real-time IoT and other applications. Uh, we also will, uh, at the back end of the webinar, will demonstrate a live uh, example of how to build an IoT a Spark application on uh, Stream Analytics um, and uh, cover of the, uh, the creation of a full end-to-end -end pipeline from ingestion through insights and, and action. Uh, the session will be interactive, followed with Q&A at the end. However, I would encourage you to send your questions in uh, during the webinar. If we can answer them live, we will. Those that are not answered live will address at the close of the session. And if we run out of time, we'll make sure that we actually answer those in writing back to you. So there will be no question that's not addressed either during the course of the webinar or in a follow-up email afterwards. So I uh, really encourage you to make use of that. It's a very interesting uh, part of our seminar each time, we, each time we do this. I'd like to start by introducing our speakers. It's my privilege to uh, introduce uh, Anand Venugopal. Anand is the business head for our Stream Analytics uh, uh, is the business leader for our Stream Analytics business unit. He focuses on evangelizing and and delivering thought leadership on thought leadership on how to derive business value from big data and fast data analytics for our Fortune 1000 enterprise uh, customers and and prospects. He's well known thought leader, uh, sought after, has spoken at a number of uh, conferences here in the U.S. Uh, hosts meetups and has actually hosted uh, uh, for us a number of different webinars. You've maybe enjoyed some of his past uh, uh, thought leadership. With him also today is Samir Baidi. Uh, Samir is a senior solution architect for the solution for the Stream Analytics business, and he actually leads our product engineering team and is responsible for analyzing complex engineering and business challenges and and devising uh, and architecting appropriate solutions, and you'll see one of those exercised here today during this webinar. His overall expertise and background is in big data, uh, cloud computing, and, and advanced uh, analytics. So, Anand, if you would get us started, uh, over to you. Thank you very much, Larry. It looks like even God didn't like you praising me too much and introduced a couple of <laughs> interruptions, so that's why you should never <laughs> praise me too much. Anyway, thanks a lot, Larry. Appreciate it, and welcome to the audience. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening uh, to those of you who are listening to us live, and if you're listening to this as a recording, welcome and thank you for your time. Uh, my name is Anand, and I uh, head the Stream Analytics business. As uh, Larry said, it's a pleasure to have uh, Larry and our webinar team here on the Impetus side, uh, particularly my friend uh, Samir Bide, who is uh, our director of engineering. He actually leads the complete engineering of the product. So it's, it comes to you from a very, very uh, knowledgeable position and perspective because he's seeing all our customers, what they're doing with streaming, what they're doing with IoT, what they're doing with Spark. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of content that's going to be valuable for you. And like Larry said, please uh, feel free to keep you know, putting in your questions in real time. As far as possible, we try to answer every one of them during the webinar live. <clears throat> With that, let me get right into the, the subject matter here. So streaming analytics for IoT with Apache Spark. So there's three big topics there, streaming analytics, IoT, and Spark. We'll, we'll, we'll get into the IoT domain first and look at the market perspective. 
uh, and then get into the application architecture and what it takes to build IoT applications. Uh, we look at a couple of real use cases that we've actually solved for major customers here in North America and, uh, and follow that by a demo and, and some questions, question and answer with, with you all, the audience. So uh, if you're wondering who is Impetus, uh, let's tell you very quickly who we are and what we do. We're a mission-critical technology solutions company that's been around since 96 here in the U.S., and we were founded uh, in India in 91. Praveen Kankaria, our founder and CEO, still leads the company out of our headquarters in Los Gatos, uh, California, where, where I'm joining you from. Uh, most uh, of our customers, especially as of, as of today, are common names that you will hear in your, in your daily life, large enterprises, big banks, big telcos, that we interact with as consumers every day, um, uh, retail, healthcare, all across verticals. We're about 1,800 people, uh, and our niche currently is around the big data products and services, and that's, that's really what our identity has become now. Uh, we started doing big data implementations for, for large customers about nearly a decade ago, and that gave us some, a lot of good, fresh, and, and very early perspectives on what gaps there are in the marketplace, and that had us invest in products as well. So Stream Analytics is one of those uh, products that we, uh, that we invest in developing in response to our customers, including both in the telco and manufacturing space. And uh, you'll, you'll see a little bit about Stream Analytics later in the webinar, but the initial focus is going to be on just educating you a little bit about what we know about, about Spark and building applications for IoT. So with that introduction, I'll go uh, right into the IoT market perspective. Um, everybody likes to start with some of these big numbers, and uh, you know, one is skeptical, is skeptical sometimes about about too much hype. But you know, having done enough research and being in a few IoT shows myself, I'm, I'm pretty convinced that this is is a very real phenomenon. So there's going to be about four trillion dollars spent in 2021 on IoT endpoints and services, and this is a Gartner prediction. Uh, as of December 2017, it's, it's directly out of one of their reports. And um, 25 billion units of, of installed base in 2021, and in 2021, there's going to be actual new, net new, 7.6 billion devices that will ship. And starting from 16 to 21, there's the 32% CAGR, compound annual growth rate, uh, for this whole marketplace. And uh, we also checked in on, on McKinsey and a couple of other uh, leading analysts. The numbers seem to seem to tally, and they're all around the same uh, range. So it's uh, multiple trillion dollars of market opportunity in terms of dollars that, that the IoT market offers us. And let's think about that a little bit and say, okay, well, great, but what is this IoT market, right? It, it, if some of you are fuzzy about what all this means, the next slide is for you. So the market subdomains that we call Internet of Things is split into all of these large areas and probably many more, um, but these are some of the leading ones that we come across. So smart home is all about devices, your microwave and your refrigerator and all your appliances talking to each other and talking to your mobile phone, and you're able to program them and control them wherever you are. Um, we see pretty much every car uh, that's coming out these days is smarter and smarter than its previous generation, and especially with autonomous electric vehicles, uh, there's going to be about 30 GB per car per, per hour uh, flowing into the cloud or flowing into uh, the base center. And we're working with a lot of auto majors ourselves, and, and they're, they're dealing with this uh, uh, really humongous and unprecedented uh, surge in data and analytics. And all companies, including cars, are now becoming data and analytics companies because of this data surge. So uh, smart buildings that regulate their energy consumption based on the time of day and consumption patterns. Um, there's plenty of opportunities, of course, for optimization around resource utilization around smart cities, parking lots, uh, streets, street lights, all of that. And uh, a couple of my own friends are in smart agriculture. They're doing drones um, that, that fly over entire agricultural crop areas and give feedback on crops, what, what's happening to the crop. What, what, what you do with it, and of course, those are all connected drones. <clears throat> and um, we're working with manufacturing vendors uh, and uh, large manufacturing companies and automa industrial automation companies that are looking at predictive maintenance, uh, condition-based monitoring on the, on, the, on the plant, and a number of uh, smart factory use cases. 
and uh, most of us are probably wearing a, a Fitbit and um, an Apple Watch or some kind of health monitoring device on our on our on our bodies. And we're also working with medical instrumentation companies and hospitals uh, that are that are streaming data from uh, from meters and measurement devices straight into a cloud and doing analytics. Um, Using those, using those data points for better and faster medical care. Um, I'll add smart data centers, smart energy, and smart retail. Also, and most of you must have tuned into the latest development with Amazon, <clears throat> Amazon's uh, you know walk-in, walk-out store that that automatically charges your cart. Uh, it's all it's all IoT, and um, so it's very very real, getting more and real and more large as we speak. And you know, coming to the point of this webinar. What does it mean for us as application developers, as uh, the backend infrastructure and uh, analytics data management providers on what all this means in terms of um, an architecture that harnesses all that data, that correlates it, and that makes meaningful business impact and meaningful consumer impact? And that's where we're going next. Um, as a generic solution pattern and architecture for IoT, this is what you will find. So no matter what subdomain among those eight or ten subdomains we saw, the pattern is that there's, there's connected things. Uh, there's going to be either some, some sort of embedded communication and compute capability right there on the device, and it, it communicates with the field IoT gateway, which has uh, some level of device management capability and some, some level of filtration capability as well right there. So you have an option to filter data at the edge as opposed to taking everything into the cloud. You then have a cloud IoT integration hub. That is the entry point for your core systems in the cloud for your data analytics and data management systems. And uh, that leads into the bottom right part, which is where Spark fits in. And that's the centralized IoT data management and analytics platform. That's where our product stream analytics fits in as well. And of course, enterprise applications which control the business policy and, and the, the consumer interface and what should happen on this application are connected to the data management and analytics platform. So the, the rest of this webinar is all about that, that piece on the bottom right, which, uh, which is the core brain center of IoT data processing and analytics. And Samir will take us through what all the challenges are in, in uh, building out those applications, what are the patterns, and what do you need to take care of. And that's, uh, that's what the rest of the webinar is about. Before that, though, I will request a minute of your time to to answer this poll, and we, we don't need to answer it right away, but just it'll come up on your screen in a minute. We want to know what you are doing with IoT, what technology stack are you using, um, and are you using Spark or Flink, uh, are you using a particular cloud vendor, and uh, my partner Pankaj Vagza, the marketing manager here in the webinar, will, will uh, put out this poll. It'll come up on your screens on the right side, bottom. So look at that and answer the poll, please, and take your time. We'll be closing the poll after about 15 to 20 minutes, somewhere in the, towards the end of the webinar. Okay. Thank you for your time, and that will help us uh, provide you know, uh, better quality in webinars and, and also uh, tell us a little bit about you. Over to Samir. All right. Thank you, Anand. Um, hello, everyone. I'd like to start by visiting the problem domain and uh, talk about the four uh, key aspects of an IoT application architecture, those being uh, telemetry, computation, and analytics, device management, and operationalizing uh, uh, an IoT application flows. Uh, starting from the top left, telemetry. Telemetry deals with uh, collecting data from uh, remote sites. This aspect uh, basically defines the data ingestion architecture of the entire uh, blueprint of an IoT architecture. Uh, now, given the uh, connectivity dynamics uh, in the IoT space, uh, what this means is there's a need to create a very robust client-side framework as well as a state-aware secure server-side layer. The next uh, aspect, uh, the second key aspect is the computation and analytics part. For real-time decisions, uh, the data has to be processed within a certain time period uh, after which it is generated. However, uh, analyzing uh, historical data also leads to you know, more accurate analytics results. So in addition to whatever you're running on the real-time analytics front, 
there has to be a, another offline batch analytics process uh, running to you know update your model and make it more accurate. So basically, what this means is uh, uh, the computation engine that you choose has to support both elements of uh, real time, near real time, as well as offline analytics. Also, given the uh, large number of data representation standards and uh, key data characteristics of devices, the schematization of metadata becomes a key challenge to solve. Supporting this aspect enables uh, reuse and better organization of metadata. Uh, also, due to the lean transmission and bandwidth aware data formats, uh, IoT architectures um, and the data flows need to have underpinnings required to access data in various other uh, uh, data sources, data source, and services. So, data blending, enrichment, and multi party interaction are uh, considered a very key component within this uh, computation analytics space. Next is device management. Now, devices vary a lot in their uh, processing capabilities. So, an IoT architecture must uh, enable uh, simplified device management. With such a large number of you know, specialized devices that vary greatly in their uh, transmission needs, to generalize um, service to device communication, there is a need to support multiple MEPs or uh, message exchange patterns. That also includes uh, out-of-the-box, out-of-the-band communication with devices, wherein you boot up a device based on some uh, command from your server-side uh, architecture. Coming to operationalizing your IoT flows, you know, with a with a growing ecosystem of connected devices, communication must be secured and regulated. So there has to be an IoT uh, gateway in the middle that does all that. For IoT applications that need to scale massively and must support uh, continuous development and modifications, agility, extensibility also are very uh, you know, fundamental aspects to solve within the operationalizing space of uh, an IoT application. Now, given these uh, broad set of challenges, act, uh, architects must design for the whole rather than parts. So to create a holistic solution, these are the foundational elements uh, within an IoT architecture. Those are data ingestion abstractions, event and micro-batch computation engines, metadata registry and management, as well as uh, some form of uh, data flow management and DSL capabilities. Uh, the data ingestion abstraction provides a simplified API for the platform users, and it also extracts the complexity and specifics of uh, communication channels. The computation engines, uh, you know, event-based or micro-batch engines, basically form the processing backbone of the architecture. And support here again, the support for multiple engines is very, very desirable as a plug-and-play component of the architecture. Metadata registry uh, and device management deal with uh, metadata management and um, device transmission heterogeneity. The goal here is to provide the uh, platform users uh, with better abstraction in uh, device interaction. Uh, data flow, the last data flow pipeline and management capabilities, uh, they enable rapid application developers and also uh, have uh, underpinnings for role-based communication with the architecture. Sorry. Rolling these uh, foundational elements into a layered architecture for IoT is represented in this graphic. Uh, the consumers of this architecture are basically your uh, upstream or downstream business applications, smart dashboards, et cetera, et cetera. To the left is the uh, device integration aspect of the architecture where you can see multiple managed devices or do-it-yourself uh, EDA or uh, stage-driven architecture sources connecting to the architecture. The managed devices uh, interact with the uh, architecture via a IoT gateway. Now, this uh, gateway acts as a proxy for devices for uh, bidirectional communication. Right uh, from the data ingestion layer, uh, the next layer to the IoT gateway, from the data ingestion layer up to the action layer, these, uh, these layers actually offer services to implement what we call as the IoT development loop, which is um, shown above in the graphic, which is ingest, in which analyze and act. The data ingestion layer uh, offers, again, simplified API, and it connects to multiple data sources like uh, MQTT, Kafka, Event Hub, IoT Gateway from AWS, Kinesis, and some other event sources. The data processing and storage layer, uh, this provides the basic building blocks for commonly used data manipulation and advanced uh, statistical operations. 
then this architecture we're using Spark as the compute engine. However, like I said uh, a minute ago, uh, multi-engine support is very, very desirable, and uh, that can actually be brought into this architecture by abstracting the data flow definitions from the underlying uh, low-level constructs provided by the engine implementations. So you can abstract out whether you are using Spark or Flink. Uh, the processing layers would pretty much say the same. The analytics layer and insights layer is uh, built over um, uh, you know, the APIs provided by Spark, and they composed, uh, they're composed of machine learning patterns like uh, Model Swap, Champion Challenger, Online Learning. So they utilize the services provided by the Spark engine, and you can build uh, higher level abstractions on top of that. The action layer uh, provides uh, outbound notification services, third party integration like IFTTT which is of this and that. And um, right below this graphic, we have infrastructure layers, which is path integration layer and compute infrastructure. The path integration provides API and runtime uh, for action layer services, uh, which is a service layer above it. Uh, another uh, very key uh, component to this infrastructure is the management layer. Now this management layer is actually orthogonal to the other layers in the architecture. It, it uh, enables uh, rapid application development, lifecycle management, and workflow services if you want to switch together multiple IoT flows into a bigger uh, orchestrated uh, IoT flow. Now we saw how uh, Spark fits in this architecture. However, there are compelling, very, very compelling reasons to choose Spark as the backbone for your IoT architecture. Uh, these are, uh, it is massively scalable. Uh, it provides a robust support for uh, a variety of uh, cluster managers. There also, there's also a cloud-ready version backed by multiple vendors. It also has uh, fault tolerance built into the framework itself. Uh, Spark comes with a very rich uh, library of out-of-the-box data sources, data things, and also has the ability to handle multiple data formats and statistical operators. Uh, the it has a very simplified and unified programming model. By unified, what we mean is uh, it supports both uh, batch and uh, streaming use cases. And with structured streaming, it is only really going to be unified into one single model. Uh, from a machine learning and analytics perspective, there's a lot of open um, uh, standards that are implemented, and there's a huge library of machine learning algorithms and uh, transformations available um, uh, for the Spark uh, users. Now, you know, given the conceptual architectures and also the kind of interactions that we've had with our uh, uh, customers, there are certain recommendations that we'd like to make. Uh, one is, um, the first one is adopt an integrated approach. What this means is, uh, Instead of realizing aspects of the architecture in silos, like only focusing on one, then building another, choose an end-to-end -end approach to building a complete IoT architecture. Next is uh, build your application development layer rather than just assembling different, different uh, frameworks together. The IoT, uh, again, vendor neutrality and interoperable architectures are key. So an IoT application must be infrastructure agnostic. So whatever you do in Microsoft Azure today should also work in uh, AWS EMR or even on-prem. So choose a strategy that uh, enables vendor neutrality. Last one is uh, instead of you know redesigning the loop, uh, choose uh, or experiment with uh, available IS, SaaS, and PaaS providers uh, for the IoT domain before you get on to do it yourself thing. <clears throat> Thank you, Samir. Thank you for that introduction and that um, wisdom on the architecture for the application. Uh, corresponding with Samir's recommendations on, you know, a vendor-neutral architecture, future-proof, technology-flexible, approach, uh, Stream Analytics has essentially implemented those same principles. Uh, we're a great combination of open source technologies and an enterprise-grade platform that doesn't limit you to any particular set of technologies. You don't, you're never locked in. 
then that's why we have some Spark, we have Storm, we are, we are adding Flink uh, <clears throat> to our platform. And uh, the user interface is, is consistent across all of these technologies to the point where you don't need to really worry about the underlying technology. And we also abstract certain functionality, uh, like a, a question just came in about how do you combine IoT data and transactional data uh, you know, based on timestamps and time intervals within stream analytics pipelines. Those are exactly the kind of functionality that we've abstracted out. So you don't need to worry about how the specifics are about implementing it on Spark. We got visual operators, and we'll show you that very soon. So that's what stream analytics is, a visual platform for building out Spark-based applications, both streaming and batch for IoT and other, other use cases, um, and we'll see more. <clears throat> so it, it processes the data ingest the analytics that, that Samir was talking about, being able to define your rules and actions. And the beauty is you, you get to design it once, you execute it anywhere on-prem, on the cloud, on different, different platforms, and you're able to also manage it uh, on an ongoing basis from a DevOps and monitoring point of view. Um, so we're going to deal with, we're going to show you a couple of use cases that we've actually solved for major customers. One is on connected cars, which is obviously a very, very hot and, and interesting topic for all of us. And the other is industrial IoT, or belongs to that smart factory subdomain that uh, we spoke about earlier. So on, on connected cars, uh, here was, and we, by the way, we've come across this type of use case, this type of requirement in multiple, uh, in multiple conversations with insurance companies as well as auto majors. So, this was an auto insurance company uh, in the U.S. that wanted to do some risk profiling on their customers based on their uh, driving patterns. So we created an end-to-end -end analytics application for, this, for that purpose, which uh, takes in after every drive, after every um, ride, there's an onboard device that sends out uh, data on that particular uh, session of, of driving that just occurred and all the met key metrics from that particular ride. And uh, we process all of that data, convert it into metadata, and, and, can, and can blend that information with weather information, uh, with other public sources and internal sources, and, and then do a risk score. Um, this was the architecture diagram that, that represented you know, that, uh, that use case. There's, there's end devices, OBD devices, and other, other um, sources inside that, that send the data out through a gateway, and there's a central aggregation server on the cloud that, that then, of course, aggregates all that information and sends it into stream analytics, and where we do all the ingest processing and the analytics and feed it into a dashboard. Um, so if you, if you notice, it's, it has very similar elements to that conceptual architecture we shared earlier on. Um, and in this case, it was the specific stages here were uh, based on AWS. Of course, we actually hosted this on the Amazon um, cloud with leveraging their IoT service. Uh, so the automated device from plugged into the OBD2 port, sent it on a on a wireless interface to to AWS IoT, where we are able to ingest that data, enrich it with other services, and and do the analytics and risk scoring I just spoke about. And at that point, we're able to persist the data and also feed some real-time dashboards on it. And um, <clears throat> there could be some rule-based alerts that could be set up as well uh, that could be sent and routed to any, any destination of your choice. Uh, that was the overall conceptual architecture. And uh, here was the UI that actually powered, uh, that actually got produced by that pipeline on Spark, and we're actually going to take you on the back end of this very, very soon and tell you exactly uh, how that was configured on Stream Analytics, but this was the outcome. So every ride, so these are, this is recent trips. Every trip, where was it, from where, where, did, it, uh, from where did the person go to where, and, and then, of course, also based on uh, other parameters in the risk score, how does it compare with the, uh, with the, with the country, which part of the country is, is bringing, bringing in more of these risky drivers, segmentation of drivers, um, et cetera. So there's tactical analytics on that ride, as well as summary analytics on the market segment or on the entire cluster of users there. So um, Samir, over to you to take, uh, take it into the, the next level of depth. Thank you. So 
if you look at the business requirements, uh, the key business requirements are to ingest data, do some data wrangling, do some uh, data blending uh, uh, with some uh, external web services like weather data, even uh, look up the on-prem database uh, to get some uh, previous driver history, and do some uh, scoring of uh, models in the pipeline. And also, again, then store data into, into a relational database or stream it uh, from WebSockets. If you take into consideration all those requirements, uh, this is all created within a single streamatics flow. Uh, on your screen, you see the streamatics flow that we created. It has, uh, it has elements of uh, data ingestion from AWS IoT Gateway, has elements of uh, some convenience operators that we have uh, for uh, data masking, data enrichment, I'll show you in a second, which is about uh, making a web service call and uh, looking up the area from where the, uh, the data is being generated, what is the risk code for that particular area. Now, all of this is being, uh, being developed by simple drag and drop operators without having to write uh, any single line of code. So let me, let me show you the uh, Streamatics pipeline on one of our uh, cloud services. Moving into... While Samir is pulling that up, I'd like to remind the audience that they should please respond to the poll on the bottom right panel. We'll be closing the poll after this case study. All right. So I'm logged into Stream Analytics on uh, our cloud instance. And uh, as you can see, this is the pipeline. And we have a very rich library of out-of-the-box uh, channels. There's some advanced data sources as well. Um, there is the data wrangling processor that you see on the right-hand side of the screen. There's the analytics, and then there's the storage data as well. So we, for this one, we've used uh, Spark Supplied Analytics, but it could have been your own uh, data model or some uh, PMML model that you could have extracted uh, from elsewhere. So walking you through the pipeline, this is what we call the channel. This is the AW, uh, AWS IoT channel in Streamatics. And this itself is a small wizard for managing your things on Amazon Cloud. As you can see here, we talked about in the architecture, we talked about schematization, managing metadata, as well as um, securing connections using our Web Studio. So here I can select the schema of the events that uh, I want to process in a pipeline. I can you know, connect to a uh, IoT data source uh, from the connection that my administrator has provided to me. And I can also select what data elements I'm interested in uh, you know, receiving from the AWS IoT Gateway. I can, as you are clicking next, and I can uh, look up my AWS Thing registry. And I can even manage uh, or create new things and assign them to thing types. So this is all going to go live into AWS IoT. I can use, uh, reuse one of the existing devices, or I can create my own and assign um, certain uh, security and policies right there. And I can also uh, create more attributes uh, for my rules. Uh, security, next is the security tab. The security is very key. We can uh, manage uh, from Streamatics console. We can manage uh, uh, policies for things and attach uh, policies to thing types. I can also set up uh, some basic uh, edge uh, filtering rules. For example, if I'm only interested in uh, uh, speed about 20 miles an hour, I can, I can select a rule that can do some kind of a filtering on the edge, uh, IoT gateway side to only give that data to my Spark flow. Uh, then I can use some out-of-the-box operators to uh, uh, mask data coming in. I want to do some PI, PI masking. I can do that here. Uh, I can do some uh, database lookup. Like uh, here, I'm looking up a web service to get uh, area risk for a particular uh, lat long location. And I can do some other bits like looking up database uh, to get the historical risk data for a particular user. Next is the scoring of a um, tree model for my risk assessment. Here I can, um, just by using a risk model, I can actually um, define what kind of variables I'm using. For example, a time of day, whether it is raining or not, is it an accident prone area? Uh, this can be uh, calculated in the risk model. And I can actually, it also has a model test functionality where I can test the model right there on the console and see based on which values, what kind of a uh, risk score I'm getting. 
Now, once the risk score is generated, I can store it into multiple locations. I can uh, store it into a relational database for uh, downstream reporting. I'm sending the data onto WebSockets uh, for real-time dashboards. And I can also do downstream integration with some other uh, data flow using RabbitMQ, Kafka, or some other uh, cloud sources as well. So what we're doing here is if there's a if there's a additional uh, risk detected by the model, what it will do is uh, it can raise an alert and send that data onto your uh, handle devices. The next use case is around uh, industrial automation. And uh, what we're doing here is uh, basically the use case is for an industrial automation major. And uh, what they want to do is uh, they have their own Microsoft Azure infrastructure, and uh, they have an array of sensors installed in various geographical locations on the factory floor. The ask here is to have multiple time series data come in for those sensor arrays and detect or uh, see how those uh, values correlate to each other when some input parameter of that process control gets changed. So for example, if I change the um, gas pressure of an incoming uh, incoming pipeline, how do the pressure, volume, humidity matrix across the different sensors vary? The critical thing here was to make this work in Microsoft Azure and leverage their existing SD Insights uh, platform. So what we did was we used our out-of-the-box um, uh, channel or data ingestion source for Azure Event Hub. All the data was uh, streamed uh, from device uh, flow onto Microsoft Azure Event Hub. From there, um, Stream Analytics was uh, installed on top of an SD Insights infrastructure, and uh, Stream Analytics pipelines were created. We used out-of-the-box components for uh, data ingestion, uh, additional statistical pro you know, processors used by Spark, and did some visualization as well as uh, data storage onto other systems. So this is a pipeline uh, view of, uh, of, the, uh, of the use case that was stalled, uh, solved in Streamatics. There's multiple time series data coming in for all the plants uh, on different Azure event, uh, event hub uh, channels. Uh, the data is enriched again. The different time series data is, um, is basically massaged and joined. Then we do some basic histogram and standard deviation calculator, uh, for, uh, which is out of the box provided in Spark. And we have our operators on top of that. We aggregate that data and push uh, correlation matrix onto a streaming dashboard. Again, all the uh, business requirements are being handled here by out-of-the-box Streamatics operators within a single pipeline. In addition to that, uh, whatever uh, you know, data gets processed, this pipeline also can be monitored from Streamatics uh, using our own uh, monitoring console. And uh, the DevOps uh, users can actually you know, uh, stop it or do some other lifecycle management activities. Like if you want to port this particular pipeline from Microsoft Azure onto an Amazon uh, platform, it's just about you know, having the DevOps user with, with that particular role downloading it and installing it on an EMR installation without having to change anything. So this I'll uh, hand over to you, Alan. Thank you, Samir. That was um, extremely useful. And um, folks, a reminder for you, please send us questions uh, that you have. There are, there are a few <laughs> questions that are coming up. Uh, thank you for putting them in. And also, we're going to be closing the poll. So this is a final opportunity to answer that poll and uh, really appreciate your feedback and, and time here. Thank you. And we'll get into Q&A uh, right after this, after a few, after a few seconds here. So what did we just tell you, right? What are the takeaways of this? Um, I wouldn't say, you know, I wouldn't start with stream analytics, but overall the recommendation was, you know, use an integrated approach to IoT development. Look at frameworks and products that are available already. We've just showcased you uh, what you can do with standard open source components and with, with a framework on top of that. We've also showcased to you what standard services are available on the cloud that you can integrate both on Amazon and Azure, and we're not saying we're limited to those two clouds and neither are you. Um, you know, you could, of course, have a cloud-based architecture. You could have a non-cloud-based and completely organic architecture as well. Either way, <clears throat> use vendor-neutral interoperable uh, components 
and there's plenty of open source based options. And, and in, in the case of stream analytics, particularly, the beauty is you've got access to your favorite open source technologies. You've got the, the UI packaged on, on top of all of this. And uh, you've got the cloud connectivity as well built into the platform. And uh, it's, it's uh, ease of use and self-service is built into the paradigm itself as a design principle. So it's, uh, we really want to enable you to uh, build out some of these applications much faster. <clears throat> so that would be uh, the key takeaways. And we look forward to start answering some of your uh, questions. And, and before that, we will also tell you where and what you can do with, with this product. Uh, number one, you can come and see us in the Gartner Summit, in the Analytics Summit in the Grapevine, Texas on March 5th to 8th. For some reason, they, um, uh, you know, the two, the two companies and organizations chose to use the same week for the shows. But we're, we're going to be in both locations. In the Strata Data Conference in San Jose, California, we're going to be uh, there as well with a, with a big booth. Uh, with, that is Impetus Technologies will be there, and the Stream Analytics will be a kiosk there. And same, same with Gartner. So we're going to be showing our, our latest demos, uh, our capabilities with Flink, TensorFlow, a lot of exciting new, new aspects of this product platform that we're going to be demoing, and some of the capabilities that you just saw in this uh, webinar. So uh, i also like to tell you a little bit about the poll responses. You all responded to the poll. Thank you so much. Um, so clearly, Spark uh, beats out the, the competition here, and that's probably why you're here. It's, a, it's, it's an audience characteristic that you came into this webinar. So 86% of attendees said that uh, Spark, uh, among Spark, Flink, and others, are your top technology. 21% um, there's, there's also said you, you use uh, Flink. Of course, these are multiple choice uh, questions. Uh, and uh, there are others that are also uh, been chosen. 34% of you chose others. So it's a combination of technologies that many of you are using with, uh, with a very strong dominant pattern here around Spark. So thank you for that. The second question on the, on, on the cloud it seems to be really a fairly even distribution. Um, Amazon, Microsoft, um, and Hortonworks and Cloudera. Amazon and Microsoft are getting 34% each, and uh, cloud and Hort Cloudera and Hortonworks are getting 25% each, and uh, in-house technology is getting 34% as well. Um, so it's an even distribution of the Hadoop distributions and uh, and cloud vendors there among among you all. So thank you for those answers. And now we're going to be moving for about uh, five to eight minutes on to the question and answer session. Um, so the first question that ever got asked here in the webinar was, how do you combine IoT data, you know, a value and a timestamp, a key value pair, and transaction data, uh, example, order number based on timestamps, time intervals, et cetera? And I responded saying, look, we have out-of-the-box components. Uh, for time windowing, aggregation, for blending, that some of you know that this, that you saw in the demo here, that uh, that are built on Spark APIs that can easily be used uh, for exactly that purpose. Um, and uh, the, there's a clarification on here whether pre-built components on the slide was was equal to standard out of the box components. The answer is yes. Um, what is the average time delay between uh, receiving the data processing and uh, insights generation? So that you, don't, you, you hear a, a balance of voices here. I'll let Samir answer that. Samir, what is the average time delay between receiving the data and insight generation? Okay. So uh, there's really two answers to that. Uh, we've done uh, this twice uh, on multiple engines. Uh, the batch size with which we've uh, used this, we were okay with a uh, average um, response time of uh, close to five seconds. But we've had uh, faster versions of this uh, running on a different engine. So it, it's about you know what what level of delay is acceptable in this use case. In this particular uh, use case, the requirement was anything close to five seconds is fine. So right Got from it. ingestion, I, we were under five seconds, and we are faster. And in the case of uh, uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry to overlap you there, uh, Samir. So. Stream Analytics is a multi-engine platform. We are focused on Spark today, but in, we still carry Storm. Until we bring in another low latency technology, we will be carrying Storm. And with Storm, we could go as low as uh, less than 50 milliseconds uh, in terms of the answer or decision to an incoming event. So because it's low latency by design, 
And in our testing, we've even gone as low as 20 milliseconds in terms of latency. But at scale, if you include, include all the hops from the original source back uh, into the data center and then back to the, back to the source, it might take a few extra milliseconds, and it depends on your network traffic, um, et cetera. So that would be the, the latency answer. Um, and as you as you've seen here, there's a, there's a person that asked, hey, do, does data sources include Kafka? We didn't see that. Absolutely, you, we can safely say any popular technology that is being currently used in enterprises is, is incorporated in as a source, starting from JDBC uh, interface to all RDBMSs. We have Kafka, RabbitMQ, we got TIPCO, we got IBM MQ, we got um, uh, you know JMS-based queues, uh, we got um, uh, custom TCP socket, so anything that, that can stream data into the data lake is supported. And the beauty of this platform is it's extensible, so you can add your own uh, adapters or receivers for any custom sources that are not available as well. Um, and we, in, in terms of Kafka, some of you, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, we can in fact deal with multiple clusters, uh, multiple Kafka clusters uh, at the same time, right? That is correct. So any, any connections that we make, we can support multiple infrastructure variations at the same time. There could be multiple Hadoop, multiple Kafka connected to your uh, data pipelines. Right. So the next question is, how do you incorporate TensorFlow into this process? Um, can Stream Analytics use this, or it, does it replace it? So we are considering TensorFlow as an engine, as an additional engine. Uh, we started with uh, building TensorFlow-based deep learning models and scoring them on Spark, and we've moved on now to using TensorFlow itself as an engine, uh, where you can both uh, build your deep learning models and, and score them with parallel processing on TensorFlow. So we actually consider TensorFlow itself as a distinct engine. Uh, we, we both have the option of scoring on Spark as well as on TensorFlow itself as an engine. Agree, uh, Samir? Yes, uh, that's that's uh, that's how we support TensorFlow. At the same time, uh, the uh, UI for pipeline building, the Web Studio, that is going to be consistent across any engine that you support. So, even if you are submitting something on TensorFlow, you'll be able to use the same drag and drop functionality to create your own pre-processing flows as well as uh, training flows and define uh, what what architectures within the TensorFlow uh, uh, framework you want to use. Got it. One of the things you might notice on your slide is that we have this thing called Visual Spark Studio. And we found that a lot of enterprises uh, really love this whole abstraction that we've provided. And for those of you who are just purely interested in Spark and not any other engine, we've, we've abstracted uh, the Visual, the, the Spark-only version of Stream Analytics into a single, single node uh, lightweight product. The current version is about 1.6 GB, so you've got to be patient, download it, and use it. In the end of February, we're going to be launching the next version of Visual Spark Studio, which you can download. is a lot more lightweight, uh, and uh, you can read right out of your file system and on your local machine and right back there. And uh, we're also going to have um, interactive visual uh, development as part of the Visual Spark Studio as well. So please do download the Visual Spark Studio or you can log into the cloud in, in the streamanalytics.com website and set yourself up for a Stream Analytics cloud trial. Uh, so either way, and we are hosting that cloud trial on our own cloud, uh, so you can either download Visual Spark Studio onto your desktop and play with it, or come onto our cloud and use Stream Analytics, uh, uh, the Spark interface, the IoT interface that we just talked about on our cloud. So you can engage with Stream Analytics either way. Feel free to ask us more questions, send us more questions, uh, but we're, with that, we're coming to uh, the end of this webinar here. We would love to bring your attention to the feedback the request that we're making, again, on the bottom right as a poll. Uh, please do send us the feedback uh, on how this webinar was, how, how useful was it, uh, or any other feedback you want to provide us. With that, uh, wish you a very, very good day. Wish you a very good month and a year ahead. Thank you for being here. Thank you, everyone, and I remind you that we will be at both Strata and the Gartner Data and Analytics Summit. We'd love to meet you personally, 
And in the meantime, you have ways to reach out to us if there are things we can do to help you advance the cause of your IoT analytics initiatives. Thank you again for attending today.